another episode of Coyote's Corner, the season preview. Can we call it the season preview edition, I Mr. Dave Vest? I think that's a terrific name for it because the season begins on Saturday. It does. For us. Yes. And this will be the last podcast before that, so let's put two and two together and come up with four. Sounds Dave good. and I are going to try and finish each other's sentences all of this year. That's kind of a new thing we're doing. On the podcast. See? See what you did there? That's All right, so that's Dave Vest, obviously, making horrible jokes 30 seconds into this. Wow. And I'm Luke Lipinski, and we are going to take you uh, for the next half hour or so on a wild ride through the uh, season preview for the Coyotes. Crazy ride. It's going to be crazy. This is going to be a crazy year. Dave. It's been a crazy day. Let's just start with today. It's been a crazy summer. I mean, it's about what? It's not about It's 2.10 on Tuesday, October 11th. Ten minutes ago, the Coyotes announced their opening night roster. It's a huge day around here. Everyone's very excited. Um, you know, there's a lot of information to provide to the fans here, Luke. So let's cut the jokes, the hijinks, all your shenanigans and get right to it. Had we told any jokes yet? <laughs> I think we tried. Oh, you did. Yeah, okay. Well, uh, there's a lot of different ways to look at the roster. Obviously, we're not going to go through every player and where they play junior hockey, or are we? I think we start with uh, the theme of the day around here, and then we can just kind of build off that. There's five rookies that made this team out of camp. Correct. That's a lot of rookies. That's – you know, I just think back to a couple years ago how tough it was. It, I'm not saying it's any less tough now, but, I mean, for anybody to crack this lineup as a rookie. And yet I was talking to somebody in the uh, in the stands today when we were watching practice. I'm – more optimistic about this team's chances this year than I was, say, two years ago going into the season. And there's five rookies on it. So I don't. what does that say about the rookies? Obviously, there's other moving parts, the additions of Alex Goligoski and Redeem Verbata and guys like that. But to have five rookies on one team is, is kind of unheard of. Well, let's talk about them. Okay. Let's break it down concisely, if that's possible. Let's start on defense. I think it's probably easier to, to do that. Okay. Well, there's one defenseman yes. who's a rookie, Jacob Chikrin. Chikrin, uh, I remember we interviewed him at the draft party the you know ten minutes after he was drafted or whatever, and I remember a couple of things he said that stood out. One, he was because that was obviously a tough day for him. He was he was supposed to be a top three pick all along essentially, and then for whatever reason at the time I speculated that it was just other players kind of had you know had had moved up, and, and for whatever reason he was able to slip to a point where the Coyotes could get him. And I remember him over the phone in the interview saying. I'm excited about this because the most important thing to me was to be on a team that I knew wanted me. And obviously the Coyotes did because they moved up to get him. And he has been lights out in camp. I will go right along with this interview on draft day theme and tell you that Jacob Chikrin looked me straight in the eye in Buffalo wow. and said, I expect to play for the Coyotes this season. That was the next thing I was going to say. And, you know, a lot of draft picks say that. He said it with such conviction, I ended up thinking after the interview was over, he just might do it. Yeah. Because he's a huge kid. He's a, as Tippett said today, he has the body of an NHL player. Yes. He's 18 years old, yeah. but he's got a man's body. He's ready physically to be in this league. So he's going to be in this league, and he proved himself correct uh, by making this team, by, uh, you know, uh, getting everyone excited during training camp and in all the preseason games he played in. He played in a lot. You know, it's it's. I asked this to Tip earlier today, too, and, and it kind of just goes back to a, a, a bigger theme. It's tough to make this league as a teenager. It's, it's so tough to make an NHL team just in general, but especially right after you were just drafted. It, you, don't, you don't see it very often other than the first pick every year usually makes it, and the second and third, you know, out of the top five, probably three of those five play that year. But for the most part, and there's a couple other guys from the draft, but generally speaking, you get drafted and then you go back to junior for a while. It's that much tougher as a defenseman for what you just said. There's not a lot of defensemen that are 18 that get drafted that have the physical maturity to be able to hit NHL players. I mean, playing against guys that are in their 20s and 30s and when you're playing the Panthers in their 40s, and you've got to be able to be physical with those guys. If you make a mistake as a young forward, it's not great, and your coach is going to know it, but half the fans aren't going to realize it because chances are your defenseman will cover for you or whatever, another forward. You make a mistake as a defenseman, and it's a shot on goal for the other team. So I'm just trying to think of the list of defensemen in the last few years that were drafted and went right in. Aaron Luke, Eckled. Luke Shen. Yeah. He's a member of the Coyotes. But even that, I mean, that's a while ago now. That's eight years. Aaron Eckblad's the only one I can remember in recent years, and Luke Shen was the fifth overall pick that year. I mean, that you know, Eckblad was number one. So to step right in 
it's it's impressive. It says a lot about how he's performed in camp because he also forced them to make tough decisions on other players they didn't think they were going to have to make, probably. So congratulations to Jacob Chikrin. Let's go to the forwards. There's okay. a lot to get to, and we have to start with Dylan Strom. Yeah, I think he's probably, you know, if, if you are just a casual hockey fan or if you're a fan of another team and you're listening for whatever reason, that you, you know, just this is a team with a lot of prospects. Dylan Strom's the one at the top of the list for everybody. You know that the listeners can't see your hand gestures, right? That's good. I'm enjoying them. Okay. Well, it's mainly for you, Dave. I didn't. Even, I don't even think I hit record, did I? Dylan Strom was the third overall pick in last year's draft. Uh, he obviously didn't make the team last year. He was here to the very last day, I believe, uh, and went back to junior and had a great season. Here he is now. Let's talk about Dylan Strom. What are the expectations on him? It's interesting, and we'll get more into this when we start to talk about some of the other rookies that made this team, but as we sit here at this exact second, the Coyotes really have five centers on their roster. Um, So the expectations for him may change from game to game. That was brought up today in the scrum with the reporters, and he made a great point. He's like, you know, I'll play wing. It's Whoever's the first offensive player in the zone becomes the center. Wait, I thought that was a, a great inside hockey soundbite. One, one of the best I've heard all of training camp. He's, I noticed you applauded. I did. I, I gave a full a standing ovation, and everybody looked at me. But I thought it, I thought that was really good insight for the hardcore hockey fans or, or you know, people that, that still play or whatever, or kids that are growing up. It, it is kind of an interesting thing, the first guy in the zone at the NHL level – you're kind of the center for that moment. Um, yeah, it, you know, they've, they've got a variety of centers. I have to think that part of the appeal to taking him third overall in a draft with Connor McDavid and Jack Eichel, so a lot of people look at that draft and say he was kind of first overall because he had those just two crazy talents. Part of the appeal is he's a center, and so I have to think we're going to see him there at least a little bit here this season. Okay, who's next? Let's go with uh, Christian Dvorak, sure. who... Uh, somebody that took in the second round a couple years ago that has been so impressive to me just in terms of how much he's improved. Yeah, he got hurt during camp, a minor injury. It cost him, I think, a game or two at the end and a practice or two. But he played on Sunday in Tucson. We'll talk about that later in the scrimmage down there. But uh, he's ready to go. He's made this team. He's a center. He's more, I would say at this point, more of a two-way player than Strom is. I think Strom is on this team to score goals and create uh, offensive opportunities. But Christian Dvorak's numbers in junior, I mean, he was routinely over 100, 110, 120 points playing on London, and uh, he can score, and he can put the puck in the net. I remember uh, the ridiculous saucer pass he had. I want to say it was in the red and white rookie game over the summer, and and, and he continues to make plays like that in, in preseason. How about the pass he made to Doner in yeah. the uh, preseason game against the Ducks? Very similar, yeah. To close Shane Doan was raving about that pass. Yeah, I, I think those, those two are, are certainly going to – headline the, the forward group of, of uh, prospects. And, I mean, those are those are household names to hockey fans across this continent. They're, they're both routinely ranked in the top five, top ten prospects around the NHL. And it's good to see both of them deliver on that promise so far and make the team because you don't just get handed a spot on, on any NHL team, but especially one coached by Dave Tippett. He's not just going to look at the roster and say, well, we need a center, and we pick Dylan Strome early. So here you are, Dylan. You have to earn it. Dylan Strome learned that last year. Max Domi learned that, of all people, and obviously it worked out pretty well for Max Domi. How about Lawson Krause? Well, I, you and I talked about this on this podcast after uh, they traded for him. He's different from all the other prospects the Coyotes have and that he's kind of a physical specimen out there too. And he'll play on that wing. You know, he makes the team right out of camp too. It's, it's interesting to see how Dave Tippett's going to fit all these guys in the lineup on, on a nightly basis. But I think he brings something different than all these other prospects we're talking about. He was the 11th overall pick in the same draft that the Coyotes drafted Dylan Strome just last year. So look at that. Let that comment sink in. The Coyotes have on their roster for this season – two of the first 11 picks in last year's draft. And they have Nick Merkley, who's not on the roster this year, but he was a first-rounder that year, too. So they have three first-rounders from last year's draft. Great point. System. That's why I'm here. I'm here to make one good point or so. Lawson Kraus, we mentioned Jacob Chikrin has an NHL body. Lawson Kraus is huge. Yeah. I mean, I was surprised when he walked in the door that first day yeah. how big he is. He towered over you. It was embarrassing. But he's a big man, so it really wasn't that embarrassing. Okay, uh, I fear now we've buried the lead, perhaps. Okay. Laurent Dorfon. Did so, I say that right? I think you did. Um, I kind of stumbled there. He, he's um, he's the only one of this quintet that has any NHL experience. And, Eight games. And I really feel like 
he is that sort of Dave Tippett type player. Um, you know, I remember last year there was all that talk about Anthony Duclair and Max Domi, and there should have been. I remember asking Shane Doan before camp even started, who's a different rookie that's going to surprise us? And he said, Jordan Martinook. This guy's, this guy's going to – he's going to turn heads at camp. And then I remember it just kind of became apparent over the course of camp that, yes, everybody else getting the headlines, Jordan Martinook's going to make this team. That's Laurent Dauphin this year. And – Two years ago, that was Toby Reeder. I mean, so there is sort of – this is three years in a row now where a rookie has made this team that fits the way Dave Tippett likes to play hockey. Dauphin, I see as a fourth-line center, big influence on the – uh, not the power play, excuse me. Big influence on the penalty kill. Yeah. That's going to be his role, right? Oh, yeah, I would think so. And, and I mean, he can, he can win faceoffs too. He's – you know, when you put him on a team with Reeder and Martinook – you have three pretty versatile young players that can skate but can also do some damage on the penalty kill. You start to look at the overall construction of this roster for the Coyotes. They have a lot of flexibility, which not every team has. Okay, so that's it for the rookies. Five yeah. rookies, we've detailed them all. Let's talk about this team aside from the rookies. Shane Doan turned 40 years old yesterday. He's back. He was the leading scorer last year. He had three goals in the preseason. Looks like he picked up where he left off. I, the very first day of camp, we were recording uh, a radio thing up in one of the suites, and I looked down, and it was just it was quick. You couldn't really necessarily tell who it was instantly because they didn't have the jerseys with the numbers on it, and it was it was two quick, just ridiculous shots right up underneath the crossbar. I looked harder for a second, realized it was Shane Doan. He's done that to me probably four or five times throughout camp, where he's even today at camp. He made two really slick moves. I guess it's not even camp anymore. It's practice. Correct. Camp is over. The fire has been put out. The sleeping bags have been packed. <laughs> no more s'mores. Tents have been taken down. No more s'mores. Well, let's not get crazy. Okay. That's, uh, there's no point in making needless sacrifices. Um, he looks good. He doesn't. He doesn't look like he has uh, lost a step. I don't think anybody expected that. He scored 28 goals last year. You know. I could see him doing 20 goals again. I really, I could see him putting in more. I, I was really going to say 25 might be the over under on goals by Shane Doan. Are we crazy? We've watched camp. I don't think we're crazy. I think if you were trying to pick a number where some people might go over and some might go under, you'd probably say right around 20. If he scores 20 or 20 plus goals again, I would take the over. I, I would. I mean, he's he's obviously in great shape. You can play in the NHL if you take care of your body and you're, you know, he's obviously very talented. Look how long his career has been. You can play past 40. You can't play past 50, but you can play into your 40s. I don't think it's inconceivable at all that Shane Doan puts in 21 goals this year or maybe even more. And uh, and then when you put that on top of the influence he has in the locker room, no matter what the team is, I mean, he was captain of Team Canada a couple years, a few years ago, but um, when you have so many rookies and four second-year players to have a guy like Doan off the ice becomes that much more valuable too. Shane is a key cog here, a member of the core. Let's go through the core that's back. Okay. Ekman Larson, Smith, Hansel, Murphy, Michael Stone. Who am I leaving out? Toby Reeder, you mentioned earlier. He's yeah. a key member of this team. Well, I mean, when, Domi and Duclair. Domi, How could I forget when them? You, Duclomi. You, Duclomi. <laughs> when you start, now we have now we have Stromi on one line, um, potentially. So, you, you, yeah, you start to rattle off the second year players too, like Domingue and Domi and Duclair and Martinook. Um, Coyotes didn't really lose anybody that they can't replace, and they added Redim Verbata too. I mean, they add that back into the core, and I know we're kind of rattling through the roster quickly here. Alex Goligoski, I think, is going to be a game changer for this team because he gives them, you know, I think Coyotes fans, and I'm probably guilty of it too, get sort of spoiled when you see Oliver Ekman Larson play defense. You're like, I mean, look how quickly he moves the puck up the ice. If he can't find an outlet pass, he'll just carry it up himself. Uh, but he's so good with the passing to trigger the offense. That's what the NHL is now. But then you watch the other teams around the league. They don't all have an Oliver Ekman Larson. And Alex Goligoski isn't OEL, but he gets that puck up the ice really quick too. And all of a sudden, that makes guys like Domi and Duclair that much more valuable. How much can a forward really do if the defenseman can't get him the puck? I mean, to a certain extent, you're, then you're just a forward that's cycling back waiting for a pass, and they can't get it to you. So you're just skating a lot without the puck. So having Goligoski and OEL out there for, what, probably 75% of the game, one of them will be on the ice, that's going to make the forwards better. And Mike Smith can move the puck. If, if this is a, a league now where you need puck movers on the back end, the Coyotes have two potentially elite puck movers on defense and probably the best puck-moving goalie. I think having Goligoski is going to be huge 
in that it's going to reduce the amount of minutes that Oliver Ekman Larson is going to have to play. Yeah. I know he likes playing 30 minutes. Everybody wants to play as much as they can. But over an 82-game season, that's a lot to ask of one player. Goligoski comes in here. I think you'll see OEL's minutes go down. Not a lot, but subtly enough You know where he's not taxed. Yeah. T A X E D. <laughs> this is a new feature where Dave spells one word he says. Uh, you could see the two of them on the power play together, too. Or you could see them spread out, and then your entire two minutes, you have one of them out there anchoring it. He gives them a lot more options. I know it was a big deal when they signed him, but I also know that sometimes it gets lost in the shuffle of, oh, that's the, the guy the local team signed. So, yeah, cool. It's a nice move. He was the highest rated free agent defenseman that would have hit the market. He didn't even hit the market. There's a reason for that. Okay, so Goligoski headlines the newcomers. You mentioned Verbata. Is he a newcomer? I don't know at this point. Three time newcomer. I feel newcomer. like he's been here longer than I have, I but think he's so. also left, too. Anyway, he's back. Yeah. He's already, as we predicted, been placed on a line with old pal Marty Hansel and Max Domi on the other side. That line appears to be a go, at least for the opener. So I'm excited about that. Yeah, I think a lot of I think a lot of Coyotes fans, the second they saw the signing of Verbata, immediately started thinking like, "Well, put him with Hansel because they're good buddies and they've played together in the past." And hey, look, Max Domi's a playmaker. It, it's it makes a ton of sense on paper. Just because it makes sense on paper doesn't mean it'll work necessarily. And if it doesn't, then Tip it'll he'll juggle that up. But so far through camp, I think it has worked. And really, it is more than just on paper because we've seen Radim and Marty play together before. And Max Domi, he I can make Max, anybody good. I was just gonna say. You could put me and you on a line with Max, and we might. He'd be you know. waiting for us for a while. Right. Pass well, would be right on the stick, though, every time. All right. So let's see. Other newcomers. Uh, we haven't seen him in a while because he's been a little banged up. Jamie McGinn. I think he's a 20-goal scorer. I, I don't have to think he is. He is a 20-goal He's coming scorer. off 20 goals, yeah. yeah. I think he will probably score 20 goals here. The construction of this team is is such that. You sit here and you rattle off forward after forward after forward, and then you start to think, like, where are they going to fit all these guys? And, you know, Jamie McGinn's a good example of sort of a under-the-radar, yeah, it's not like they went out and got Alex Ovechkin. You can't get those players. But he did score 20 goals last year, and he's a bigger player, and he can be a little physical if he has to, and he's a vet, which on this team, you need some vets like that. I mean, I think he fills a role this year, and I think he provides offense. I think we're going to see a pretty balanced attack by the Coyotes which doesn't work if you're a team where everybody's scoring eight goals. But I think they've got I – mean, you, you start to put some of these names together. They've got seven, eight, nine guys that are capable of scoring 20 or more goals. Now, nine guys aren't going to hit 20 goals this year. That would be insane. But you've got a lot of guys that can put the puck in the net. Not 50-goal scorers, but a lot of 20, 25, 30-goal scorers. And that adds up to success. Tip said today, don't rule out Jamie McGinn for the opener on Saturday. He hasn't played or practiced in a while now. But yeah. he has not been ruled out, so we might see him on Saturday. Ryan White is a newcomer. I'm excited to watch him play. He's the uh, energy guy with the long hair. He's fans, definitely the energy guy. Fans are going to like him, I think. Playing his old team on Saturday, too. And also, I do believe we mentioned Luke Shen, but he's a big body. He loves to hit. He's a huge presence back there. So, yeah, I'm excited. This roster, you know, you look at it. We mentioned the rookies, the newcomers, the core guys. It's just going to be uh, an exciting season. I think the Coyotes are poised for vast improvement. I think they did a very good job of the, you know, the main focus heading into the summer was let's make this defense better. And John Chaika just went out and basically flooded that blue line with so many options that you saw it here during camp this year. There wasn't, you know, there, there's years past where you're like, okay, well, this guy's going to make the team because he's played in the NHL before and, you know, these guys in, in junior or in the, the prospect pool aren't quite ready yet. So that's just the way it is. There was so much competition for roster spots along the blue line that good players are either going to Tucson or you know, or maybe they're not even on the team anymore because there was so much competition on the blue line. And I know that that was – if it wasn't their absolute main focus heading into this offseason, it was right at the top of the list. All right, so we got a little time left here. Do you want to open it up to – Questions? Some questions okay. or uh, some freestyling. Any random thoughts about the season – uh, I know we were talking before going on air about what happened down in Tucson on Sunday, the red versus white scrimmage at the Tucson Convention Center. Great turnout. About 4,500 people came out. Lots of money was raised for the U of A men's hockey program. Um, I believe $9,000 was the number that I saw. So I wanted to thank everyone on behalf of the Coyotes for coming out to that event. It was very well attended, and uh, the enthusiasm in the building I thought was great. Yeah, I'm you know being down there even when they just unveiled the uh, the jerseys and the logo and everything, 
the place is packed. I mean, and you and I talked about this a few months ago on this show, but it's you get a chance to go to Tucson and put a professional sports team there when they don't have a professional sports team. So that not only are you going to get hockey fans embracing it, you're just going to get sports fans embracing it as their team. And it just it works out so well for the Coyotes, and you even saw it in some of these these roster cuts near the end of camp. Yeah, we're going to send this guy to Tucson. It's not like he didn't play well. It's just there's a lot of competition for roster spots this year. But he's also two hours away, so we can call him up at any time. And I, it's just – I know it sounds – so basic, but they didn't have that in years past. In years past, it was, okay, well, he's only 3,000 miles away, so we'll call him up, and he'll be here in four weeks. Like, now you can – if you got an issue on a Monday morning and you have a game Monday night, your guy can be here probably, depending where they're playing. So it just – it all goes back to having more flexibility, more options, and that team in Tucson is going to be pretty good this year. Random thoughts. Well, one last thought on the Tucson game. The goal that Dylan Strom scored was unreal, and I believe that's still up on the Coyotes' Twitter feed if people haven't seen it. You know, Strom is one of those players that being drafted in that in that class, there's this thought of, oh, he's going to be flashy and he's going to be amazing. He's going to be productive. He's not always going to be that flashy, but he was pretty flashy at times in junior, and that goal on Sunday was just ridiculous. Mike Smith has been wearing black pads in games and white pads. I like the black one. Uh, I asked him about it. He said he's still trying to figure out what he's going to do. What do you think? What do you like? Well, I like the black. The black is, is it's from the uh, the throwbacks last year, correct? When he had the, yes. the black jersey, so he just went with all black pads. He played really well in those games. Bear with me here. I have a thought, and I oh, hope Mike's oh, listening. Okay. How about he does half white, half black with the black on the outer side of his legs, so then if he does a stack pad save, it looks like a double stuffed Oreo. That is awful. I thought you were going to say, how about black on just the left leg and white on the right leg? But uh, That's another option. You know, goalies are an interesting bunch. Have so you we'll seen see. Louis Deming's new mask? I have, and it's pretty Way cool. Way cool. Yeah. Let's tell the fans about it. It's almost worth becoming a goalie if you're a kid just so you can design the mask. Uh, but then, of course, you'd have to be good at, at being a goalie, too. So he's basically, the theme is, it's sort of an homage to, I knew you wanted to say homage, that's why I said it well, first. Well, no, I was going to go for the Mount Rushmore oh. of Arizona sports legends. Okay, so who does he have on it? He has Larry Fitzgerald, he has Randy Johnson, Steve Nash, and then he has Sean Burke. Yes. Representing the Coyotes. There was a and reason for that. We asked him. Why not Shane Doan? And he said, well, Shane's still a teammate of mine, and that would be kind of weird. That would be awkward. <laughs> so he picked Sean Burke, who had a great career here in Phoenix. He was the goalie coach when Louis was drafted by the Coyotes, and he had a big role in getting Louis from that draft to the NHL. So it was a tip of the hat or a tip of the mask to Sean Burke. I thought it was a classy move. I think it's. I think, just think it's a cool mask. I mean, when you – you know, sometimes you get these guys and, and they're gone for the whole summer or whatever. To me, a mask like that shows that Louis Deming is embracing the, just the general sports community in Arizona. He's not just, okay, I'm here to do my job and I'm gone in the summers. Like, he's kind of a fan of, of Arizona area sports, you know, just like Shane Doan. You talk to Shane Doan and he'll be talking Diamondbacks and Cardinals and Suns with you, whether you ask him about them or not. Uh, so I think it's kind of cool just to, to tie everything together in one mask. And it, it it's not just a cool theme. It actually looks pretty nice. All right, so let's wrap things up. Okay. The home opener, the season opener, Saturday, Gila River Arena against the Flyers, 6 o'clock. Tickets still available. The game will be on television on Fox Sports Arizona and, of course, on radio on ESPN Phoenix 620. Yeah, I, it's, you know, it's you're going to start off a pretty exciting season. Uh, I remember how the Coyotes started last year. I think a lot of people do, where they just were surprising teams with how quick they were playing Anaheim and L.A. so much in the first few weeks last year. The home opener is Saturday. If you're planning on coming out to see the Coyotes in October, I suggest you do it Saturday because they go on the road for six straight after that. Yeah, there's only two home games in October, Saturday and then October the 29th, another Saturday against the Avalanche. Yeah, so a Philadelphia team you don't see very often. You're going to see Claude Giroux. I mean, there's some star power on that team, but it would be nice to start the year off with a win. Like I said, I think the Coyotes are going to – I don't know that they're going to surprise a team that sees them a lot, like San Jose. I think San Jose knows what's coming from the Coyotes. Philadelphia, how often do they see the Coyotes, really? Twice a year. So I I, I want to see how this speed that looks so overwhelming in practice – matches up around the NHL, but I'm encouraged because when we saw it last year with just Domi and Duclair and Martinuk, really, there were teams that couldn't handle it, and they were very good teams. So it's it's going to be different this year. Teams are going to be keying on Max Domi and Anthony Duclair. That's really the challenge in your second year when you have a rookie year like they did. 
but it makes things a little more interesting when you can then throw it to Dylan Strome or Christian Dvorak or, oh, by the way, Shane Doan. We've already penciled him in for, what, 27 goals now? I just keep talking. The goal total keeps going up. So, Dave, you're giving me the sign to leave your office. Uh, I want to thank Doug Cannon, executive producer, for putting this together. Do you have any final thoughts before we head out of here? Nothing major that we Sounds haven't already right. touched on. I, I agree with you. I'm eager to see how this all translates on the ice. Having the Flyers come in here on the first uh, night of the season, I think, is a great move. It's a treat for the fans. You know, it's a team they don't get to see a lot. It's an, a, a team that has a lot of uh, fans here in the Valley. So we'll see how it all plays out. It's going to be fun. And I just look forward to seeing you again on Saturday night, Luke, wearing a suit. Obviously. All right. So for Doug Cannon, for Dave Vest, I'm Luke Lipinski. Thanks for listening to Coyote's Corner. Oh, <laughs>